So my team sends me a list of things that they feel is relevant for me to record for you guys. Um, one of the things that they, uh, that they had asked me is they said, should you buy pre-made home plans when building houses? Um, and that comes in from people that are, that are coming in through our video chats and people that are asking questions through social media, through Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. And they ask certain questions. And um, one of the questions, in fact, I have heard this question multiple times from multiple people asking if they could go out and buy the, the pre-made home plans when they're building. And the answer is yes, you can. I never have. And I can only teach you guys and explain to you guys the process of what, I've do, I, what I do. And there's, there's a reason. Everything's methodical. There's a reason behind everything that I do. Now, there's, there's pricing of certain items with subcontractors, materials, um, little logistical items to save money that make sense so that it increases your bottom line and your profitability, right? Um, and designs and architects are expensive. Like to design a house for an architect is going to be somewhere between probably five and nine thousand dollars if you hire an actual architect. So one thing that I've always done is I hired a draftsman who understands CAD. And typically, draftsmen are about half as much as architects, but the CAD software actually populates based on the state code requirements um, all of what you need as far as heat loss, energy codes, um, energy credits, all of that stuff and you can save half the price. So for like a dollar a square foot, you can get a set of plans. So if you had a 2,500 square foot house, plans cost you 2,500 bucks. Really cost effective, really effective. You could buy these pre-made plans for probably a few hundred bucks, maybe a thousand dollars and save even more money. But my suggestion is to use somebody that you can actually make specific plan changes to. Um, and here's why. We can all agree, right, that Lots are not all square or perfectly rectangular, and not every house fits on the exact same lot um, uh, across the board. <clears throat> so we're, I'm a little old school. I started do building out stuff in the late 90s, and here we sit in 2021, moving into 2022. Technology has evolved, ladies and gentlemen. The internet, when I first started building, was only a couple years old. So when you sit back and you look at technology, the growth of technology and the way things are done, I'm going to show you some old school things that I still implement today that have made a big difference on how we do business and what we do every single day. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what these books are, these are floor plans from houses between 2,000 and 2,900, 999 square feet. Every single one of these is a different floor plan, and they're in sequential order by square footage. So every single house plan in here, I can just go through, and if I say, oh, I want a house that's 2,227 square feet, then I know the next page is going to be, it's go, if they're getting smaller, it's going to 2,305, they're getting bigger. Then the next one, 2,329 square feet, and they're different floor plans. 2,341 square feet, 2,350 square feet, 2,357 square feet, 2,375 square feet, 2,451 square feet, 2,465 square feet. And I just go, and look, this house I built before, so I have it tabbed right here. 2,547 square feet. Those of you guys are in my inner circle know. I, this, I haven't built these houses since 2006, 2007, ladies and gentlemen, have them tab. My business model hasn't changed in all these years. I, like I tell people, I didn't build this business model for you guys to make money. I built this business model for me to get wealthy. I had to take care of this guy right here first. Now, now I'm teaching you guys how to do what I did to get wealthy now that I've gone wealthy because a drowning person can't save another drowning person. And when I got started, ladies and gentlemen, believe you me, I was drowning. And um, now I'm on stable ground. Here's another house that I've built. You know, tabbed right here. This one's 2,584 square feet and just tons of floor plans, tons of floor plans. Now, <clears throat> you want to get a little bit more ambitious. I did build some big houses, um, actually the one I'm standing in, and it's massive, but I had it pre-sold for spec houses that you haven't sold yet. You got to be a little bit more. Now these houses are between 1,000 square feet and they skip. So these ones right here go from 1,000 square feet to 1,100 square feet, but then they, they jump to houses over 3,000 square feet. You want to know why? Because those don't fit in my business model. And those how these fit in my business model. This book right here, I devoured, okay? But just in case, I have houses that are smaller than what I build 
in houses that are substantially larger than I build on a regular, regular basis. So this book hardly ever got touched, but I have it. And so I did search plans. Sometimes I would take bigger floor plans and then reduce them down because I like the house, but I cut out things I didn't need. So you have little simple houses that are 1,050 square feet, just super stupid simple, you know. 985 square foot little houses, little casitas and stuff. Now these I'll utilize sometimes to put on onto my properties. And so we'll go in and we'll, we'll put some of this little stuff on there. Little houses, 1400 square feet, 1490, 1527. You know, these are all small little floor plans, right? And this is the way we did it. And these are all custom houses. These houses, my draftsman has actually done every single one of these. And then when you get to this little guy right here, where where it gets up to 1,100 square feet, and you get into a little bit bigger homes, then we, we pound that out and go up to the 3,000 square foot homes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I never build in this sector. I have before, but I try to stay out of it. This is the sector that starts to get hit a little bit more aggressively when the market compresses and things go bad. And so 3,700 square feet, 3,600 square feet. Yes, the houses are gorgeous. Yes, the, the houses are beautiful. But what we're doing is we're reducing risk and increasing profitability. Reducing risk and increasing profitability. So this book, I didn't use that much. Now, I, like I said, I will take floor plans of houses I like, like this one that's 4,000 square feet. Actually, I did build that house. <clears throat> I don't build too many of those. Built that one once. And um, we did this, made some changes. You see some old school modifications. Um, to some of the floor plans. And um, so, yeah, so some of these I did build. But I don't follow, follow these into my business model. This is right pre-recession. We got lucky we didn't have a lot of in any of this inventory during the recession. But re pre-recession, we got a little bit bold. And that's why I stay, say stick to this floor plan. Stick to this model right here. Now, for those of you guys who are looking at... Um, getting prepaid floor plans. It's really tough to be able to make modifications to make these custom homes fit the land. And here's where I'm going with this. Again, I'm old school, pre-internet. You go back to this. The two main municipalities when I first started building was a municipality called um, Rio Rancho. It's where Intel is over in New Mexico. And this is the city development department. Okay, so if you look here, this is actually from the city development department. I didn't make this up. This comes from the city of Rio Rancho, city development department. And what it does is it has every plat of land in the city, every lot, every street, and some of them are developed, some are undeveloped, but this is stuff that they put together back in, uh, see now this book is from 2004, but this stuff was platted back in the late 1960s by a company called Amrep, and, um, and this is every lot as it sat in 2004 within the city of Rio Rancho. Okay, every single parcel in the entire city. Look at, you can see where I bought stuff in here. I owned all this, I went in. Oh, wow, I own this whole road. This is the first three lots I built on, and then I bought this road, and I still own all of this land. What a quinky dink, right? I still own all this, this side of this road. I don't own that side, but I own this whole road right here. I own this whole road right here. Most of this stuff has been sold off right here. So I still own this part right here. And then this road right here, from here back, where I had that question mark, I own both sides of the road, all the way back. That road still to this day is not cut. Bought these lots in 2006, and I own all this land right here, all the way up to this main road, still to this day. <clears throat> so this is how I found my lots. This is where I looked at the city development plans. This is how I went in, and I purchased land, ladies and gentlemen, back in the day. Okay, now, this was my internet back then. This is the city of Albuquerque, the Albuquerque uh, development plan. And this goes in, have it on disk. We have everything on disk. And this is our atlas. This is our Albuquerque geographic information system. Okay, so same thing. We go in here, every parcel of land that's being developed and is pre-existing is in this book right here, every single piece. So when I tell you guys to go out there and do your due diligence, ladies and gentlemen, the reason we've been so successful is because I studied this stuff. But I'll tell you that people want to go in, they want to take an oddball lot, and they want to put these pre-developed plans on there, and they're a great place to start. Um, but I always tell people, have a real architect clean them up for you. 
Um, and you guys can use pre-planned. I'm not going to tell you. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys not to use them. It's just easier for me. I'm going to tell you what works for me and what's easier for me. For what works and what's easier for me is what I show you guys each and every day. Um, it's nice when an architect, I take a set of plans that I, f I feel is going to fit on a lot. I take a lot, then I have them put that, that plat that house on that lot. And then I go in and I redline the house and I say, okay, I need this wall to move. I need the kitchen to be a little bigger. I need the bedroom to be a little smaller. I need the garage to be a little wider. I need whatever it is, the entry roof to be taller. And I redline all that stuff and I'm able to have them make changes to it where on preset plans, it's really tough to do that in most, in most cases. Now, I know there's software that allows you to do that, but I don't buy plans on the internet. I buy plans from draftsmen and architects all over the country, wherever I do business, because I need a human being that can do it for me. Now, you got you to figure out who your limitations are. If you're somebody who's extremely savvy on the computer, you have the time, ability, and patience to do it, then use the pre uh, develop plans that you can buy for a reduced price. If you're somebody like me who's extremely busy, don't have the desire to be sitting down and designing out architectural designs for houses, then get somebody to do it for you. I was always taught by a mentor of mine to find people that have talents better than you, pay them, and get them to do stuff on your behalf. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a house designer, but I know what I need as far as logistics and what sells, so I know what the room sizes need to be. I know where the placement of stuff needs to be. I've learned over the years what people like, what women like, what they love in kitchens, what they like in pantries, what they like in bathrooms, what they like in master bathrooms. I, love, I know what the men like in, in garages, space, room, and so I can duplicate that. But I let the architects do what they do best, place that on the lot, and let the professionals go to work while I go and do what I do best, and that's buy land, build houses, buy land, build apartments, and develop real estate. Don't limit yourself to the petty stuff unless you have the time to, to deal with the petty stuff. Let the professionals do it for you, ladies and gentlemen, and go out and continue moving forward and compounding your success.